I have been here. The Grey Goose, Adventures of a Modern Robin Hood. Quite unsuspecting, I find myself again engaged in night adventure. A damsel swept off the footpath by a car. I go to her rescue. Then the car, having made a circuit, opens fire. No shots register. Then again the car. More shots and again we are missed. Hurriedly, I escort the lady into pastor's new, as it were, or I hope so. Then come footsteps trailing us. Stopping suddenly, I lay a knockout on the trailer, only to find he's quite a big shot at the yard. One Jonathan Service, special branch consternation. However, Janet Joyce, that's the name of my salvage, a nightclub singer, and I eventually reach Barbara Faversham's flat. Here we get the girl's story, how she picked up a little ivory disc at the club and had then been threatened by the proprietor, Max Spellman. And you got away through the dressing room window? Yes. And then Max and company set off in chase? That's right. Well, then you, you know what happened, Mr. Fletcher. They tried to run me down with the car. That's when you came to help me. After that, the shooting from the car, twice, mark you. Then the footsteps behind us. Then I jump the laddie and find I've KO'd a Scotland Yard look. Mm, frightful. And you've got his wallet and identification card. Alas, yes. This is going to be very difficult to explain to Inspector Ben Ford. It is. Well, the first thing is to dispose of Janet. I don't wish to be any trouble. You won't be. But you'll have to lie low here for a time. They know where you live. They don't hesitate at attempted assassinations in the street. You've proved that. Yes, indeed. But why all the fuss? What have I done? The fact is, Janet, that little gadget you picked up off the orchestra stand... The ivory disc. That's but... what Max Spellman tried to get from you. The thing you tucked away in your, um, um... <coughs> <coughs> yes, of course. Excuse me and turn your back a moment. Miss Favisham, help me out, will you? Oh, of <laughs> course. Uh, well, here it is. A very ordinary piece of stuff, isn't it? Mm. Feels quite warm, doesn't it? Oh, yes, it would be, wouldn't it? Mm. Well, well, well. Now, why should Max Spellman try to kill you just because you picked this up? Well, that's what I keep asking myself. Just a heart-shaped little thing, as big as a halfpenny. There's a little design on it. Did you notice? No, I noticed nothing. I didn't even look at it. That's why I couldn't understand the fuss Max made of it. Apparently, your possession of this little trinket created a danger for Max. But why, Rowley? I don't know yet. In fact, I haven't a suspicion. But according to Janet and my own experience, Max and his merry men were prepared to kill Janet to get it back. What is the design? A scorpion. Janet, my dear, you've nursed a scorpion in your uh, bosom this night. Be serious, Rowley. What do you think this little tablet means? It could have had an ace of spades on it, as far as I can see. But it didn't. It had a scorpion. My father had some cufflinks with Masonic symbols on them. Remind me someday to throw a book at you. Listen, in brief, this is just a souvenir token. Nothing in itself, but it has a zodiac sign on it. Still very unimportant. It's exactly... Quiet, like... wench. This little trinket, Scorpio, is a token, a sort of key to something. Now listen, Scorpio is one of the twelve signs of the zodiac. Any ladies' journal will tell you that. I know. Now, there may be a company of Scorpio or else a company of twelve. Each carry a little sign like this. Cancer the crab, Pisces the fish, Gemini the twins, and so on. Mr. Fletcher, you have got something, I'm certain. Good. I was sure the brain box was working. Uh, let's go a step further. Scorpio is dropped by someone on the orchestra rostrum at the Arcadia Cabaret. Yes. Yes, and Art Jennings saw me pick it up. Well, that's what Max Spellman said. And he went to town about it. Hmm. You know, I'm beginning to enjoy this. Now, if you two girls will kindly retire, uh, you'll look after Miss Janet, won't you, Barbara? Of course. And you, Janet, will oblige Miss Favisham and myself in one very important thing. What's that? You will not, at any time, look out of these windows. But I... You will not. It will not be safe for you or us to know or be able to identify this place. You promise? I promise. Good. Now, Barbara, all lights out, please. Right. Now, you'll excuse me. I'm taking my leave of you. Oh, 
What's happened? What was that funny noise? A, a sort of sliding. He's gone. Well, please turn the light on. Of course. But, but where did he go? Oh, home, I expect. Well, I was standing near the door. I'll swear he didn't go out that way. He's very mysterious, isn't he? Who is he? Perhaps it'll be better if you don't inquire too much. Just trust him. Oh, I do. He, he saved my life tonight. I can quite understand your annoyance, Inspector, at getting a phone call at this hour. Oh, so it's you again. One of these days, Mr. Grey Goose, you'll have to ring up from one of our best prisons. Oh, I do hope not. However, let's not waste the precious moments of liberty in badinage. The fact is, I am making the very gravest inquiry about the health of one of your valued police officers. It's very well, and I'll give him your love in the morning. Wait, 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 my dear fellow. Don't be hasty. You haven't asked me to which officer I refer. All right, I'll ask you. To whom do you refer? One uh, Detective Inspector Jonathan Service. Service? Why are you so curious about him? Yeah, I'm not, I hope, unduly curious, but just between you and me and the gatepost, is he on a special assignment? I can't answer that. <laughs> Thank you. I see he is. So oh, confound you, man. Have you seen him lately? No. Is strange, isn't it? Uh, doesn't he report in? Officers on special assignments don't have to. Then he hasn't. <laughs> Thank you, Inspector. I'm answered again. Now, listen to me. If you know the whereabouts of Jonathan's service, kindly notify my office at once. Uh, do I detect a little note of anxiety, Inspector? Oh, go to blazes! Dear old Ben, he suddenly gave the game away. Jonathan's service is on special duty. Hasn't reported. They're a bit anxious at headquarters. I'm sorry I had to knock him out. Ah, well. Now to get Charlie Austin down to Max Spellman's Arcadia nightclub. <coughs> so you made it, Charlie? Yes, Mr. Hicks. Well, I've done what you said over the phone. Good. Is, uh... Is this the door? That's right. Open and ready for safety lock. Uh -huh. That there window three down is the ladies' dressing room. So you've given everything the once over. That's so. Case most of the joint. Ballroom, orchestra room, dressing rooms. The office I couldn't get near. They was there till about ten minutes ago. Ah. You watched them leave? That's so. I I what are we looking for, Mr. Hicks? That I don't quite know. But I must have a look at Max Spellman's office. You know where it is? Yeah. Just behind that there orchestra platform. Then come on. Quiet. The door? Oh, not very easy, Mr. Hicks. But we'll give it a go. Oh, no good. Blimey, Mr. Hicks, it's a steel door. Wants a blowtorch, if you ask me. That's not so good. We haven't got a blowtorch. Isn't that a pity? Put your hands up, my friends. This gun is an argument. Under the circumstances, I'll not hesitate. Blimey, a fair cop. Indeed, yes, a fair cop. But as you are so anxious to get into my room, I propose to open the door myself. So, a little button of which only I am aware. Get inside. Now, let me have a look at you. Well, well, well. Just a couple of ordinary thugs. What do you want? <laughs> it's funny, you know. When I locked up tonight, I had a feeling that something was going to happen. Oh, did you? Yes. I'd had a little trouble earlier, you see. And somehow I was restless. <laughs> funny, eh? Right, it's funny. So what? Strange, you know. Uh, you especially don't strike me as an ordinary burglar. Now, what are you doing here? Answer. You've said it yourself. Burglars. Is that all? Somehow I don't reckon you're telling the truth. Listen, Muggs. I didn't come back here alone. I didn't think you'd have the pluck to. Shut up. Now, don't move. Alec. Come in, boss. So you got both of them? Yes, both, Alec. They don't seem to want to talk. Can you do anything about it? Sure. I can do lots. So you're Alec? Yes, that's me. Take a good look before I cut your eyes out. A very nice sentiments you have, Alec. Gets you into trouble at times, no doubt. Yes. Yes. You appear to have run into a door. <laughs> what happened to your jaw? 
That must have been a mighty punch, you You stopped. backpedal! Hear me? Yes, I hear you. Now, shut up. You too, Alec. There's plenty of time to get going. But perhaps these boys will answer a question or two first. That's where we started, isn't it? True. But I warn you to do as I say. Alec isn't very nice in his methods. Now, come over here to my desk. Come. All right, I'll come, but... Don't point that gun at me. Come on and don't argue. Right, jump him, Tully! I'll go up Tully! Now, Brother Max Spellman, have a little sleep. That was a smart one, Mr. Hicks. Cool. I tipped the old desk over on him. A very old trick, Charlie. Hmm. How's friend Alec? Very restful, I reckon. I gave him a clip on the other side of his jaw and he laid down with a beautiful smile. <laughs> I wonder who put his face out of straight before. I think I did, but more of that and on. There's something very screwy here. I reckon there is too. How do you think you'd act if you owned a nightclub and, coming back for your umbrella as it might be, you encountered a couple of burglars? <laughs> reckon I'd give him the nightclub? No. Not if you had a revolver like Max did. Give you another guess, Charlie. Well, uh, send for the police? Of course. Now, why didn't Max Spellman? That's right. We was on his property, nefarious like. You notice the walls of this office are covered with war trophies, Charlie? Old swords, pistols and whatnot? Yeah. During our little set two, one of those swords fell down out of the scabbard. Hand it over, Charlie, and I'll show you a very strong reason why friend Max did not send for the police. Now what has Roland Fletcher stumbled on? Follow the interesting development of this adventure of The Grey Goose.